Hey, created a malware. Welcome back, guys. My name is Abraham Ahoy. For those who are new to this channel, I'm doing my final year at Nelson Mandela University doing BCom Computer Science and Information Systems. So on this video, I have created just a basic malware. So basically, what's happening is that um, I'm trying to get information from development secret user secrets. So as we know, most of the developers when they build the application, they use they like to create user secrets on which that's where they'll store sensitive information regarding the development of the application. So what I have here, I've created a simple console application on which um, I intend to use it in a malicious way. So the name of the project is called malware and then I have created some regions on which it will simplify this whole thing. So as you can see, I do have a region called DLLs on which here is where I import the necessary DLLs to make sure that this project or the window of the console application disappears once we open. So I'm going to minimize this thing and then we come to another region on which it says helper function. So basically these are the functions that we need in order to do some basic stuff. For example, send data on which I did not implement this thing. But from the example, you can see that I was trying to do what? You can try to create some client, and then from the client, you can create a connection and then send data over there. So let me minimize this thing. And then we, lastly, we have our read file on which it will read the, the secret, uh, secret JSON file on which contains uh, sensitive information. So now we go to the main function on which our main function this is where the interesting thing happens so first of all we are printing this thing out you will see when i try to run this thing and then from there we slip the, the application we make the application pause a bit and then uh, we get our console window and then from there we make it disappear on which when you set it to zero it will close the application not necessarily close but make it run behind you will see this thing when we open our, um, our task our task manager yeah so now we're going to be studying the room the malware so basically the first thing that we do we you we try to get the username meaning we try to figure out the, the name of the person who is logged in within this thing so that we can be able to uh, to get the directory of the user secrets then we build our path and then from then we create a, uh, an object of direct info and then we path we pass the path on which we created here from that we provide some try and catch on which we try to access the directories basically this is this is pretty simple so here we're getting the folders within this directory and then from then we iterate through those those folders and then we get for, for okay for every folder we do what we get the files within every every folder basically and then from then what we do is that we, we okay for we access the specific folder and then from then we we provide this this function we call this function and provide the file name and then what this function does is that it reads through the file and then create a string builder on which it will combine all the lines within this full end. And then afterwards, after we finish building our string, we send it here on which this is where the part of sending data to probably an API on which is running somewhere else. Once we are done reading the file and then sending everything, we sleep so that we don't create too much traffic or the user become aware of this thing. The application will be quiet for like 10 seconds and then from then it will resume and then go through another file within this thing basically uh, uh, the secret folders contain at least one file on which will be the name of the, the secret the json that's it and then this is our catch meaning if our ever let's say because in most cases it's possible that we might not like the direction might not even exist 
and then we're gonna throw this action exception on which we'll just say directly doesn't exist and then do some row exception so now what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be trying to run this thing so that you see what is actually happening I'm gonna be putting some breakpoints um, I won't be showing much the content of the things that I have here since they are yeah, private. So let's try to debug this thing and see what's happening. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do some step by step so that you get to understand what's happening. Okay, another thing there might be some errors because since I'm using Entity Framework 5 and it's outdated, so that's why you might be seeing some errors. So now we have this thing in five minutes. Let's forget that part. So now it's sleeping for five seconds. It will resume and go to the next step. So now five seconds have passed and we proceed. We get the name of the user on which this is the username that I have. And then from here we try to do what? We try to, to get the directories on which the folders within this directory. And then so we move to this thing. So now we can see that the directories exist and then we'll continue proceeding with this thing. And then now we sleep for 10 seconds and then we resume the step. So I'm going to stop the application here since we all understand what is basically happening here. So if I were to change, let's say I add S to this thing, basically what will happen is to throw the, except, the exception since this directory doesn't exist. So it will do the normal process of hiding this thing. Okay, so as you can see, we managed to get into this code on which say that it doesn't exist. And then it show us the raw exception. So as you can see, the only type of exception that we are looking for is directly not found, since it's the one that we expect from this thing. Other than that, now let's move to the next part. So, we do understand this code, right? So the question, how do we make it malicious? How can we use it somewhere else? So I will be publishing this project. So basically what we need, okay, first of all, let's rectify since we've created an exception here. So now we're gonna be creating a folder called out on which this is where we're gonna be putting all together the DLLs for the project. All the dependencies will be involved in this thing. So when we publish an application, we have an option on which it says, let me actually show you this thing. So we have .NET uh, publish and then specify. So we have uh, an option called SC or self-contained, meaning this project is able to run itself deep, deep like regardless of what the .NET, uh, .NET is being installed within the machine. But if we exclude this thing, that means it won't be able to run except if the machine has that name installed within it. So let's clear this thing. Now let's publish this thing. So we say, do we have a um, publish? And then we're gonna say okay, we're gonna specify the output and we okay. First of all, let's make a directory since we don't have a directory. So we're gonna say uh, and okay, yes, okay. So the root has been created, now we're going to say it okay. specify the output on which and then we are now going to be doing is self-contain, meaning we're going to be putting all the domain dependencies within this folder so that when we run it, it doesn't have to check whether we do have a domain SDK installed within this machine. And then from there, feel like that's it so if we click enter and then see the content of this file it should be loaded with a lot of uh, DLLs so as you can see this is a lot of DLLs right so now we're gonna be opening um, the folder on which that's this is where we will see it properly so as you can see we are within this folder called alt on the malware project so this is all the dls that we've created in this thing meaning when we run this application it should do what we we discuss basically so the application that we're interested on is this one the exe file so this is what we're going to be running so i'm going to double click on this thing 
and we bring it over here so this is what we expected right it should disappear up here so as you can see on the task bar there is no console application that is showing so let's open our task manager to see if we can spot it within this one so the name of the project is malware on which it is one and then as we said or probably i've never said this thing but this console application should automatically close itself once it's done doing its job it will do those pauses sleeping and then once it's done it's going to close meaning if the developer i mean not necessarily the developer but if a user comes and checks the tasks that are running within this thing probably by the time this thing would have disappeared already so as you can see this thing has disappeared and then that basically concludes the purpose of this video on which it was just to demonstrate how to write your own malware and then find a ways on which you can hide it within your tagging machine and then without any waste of time guys thank you don't forget to like subscribe and share cheers see you in the next upcoming video bye